Um, yeah, I'm Anna Pajajski. I'm a materials engineer. Um, this means that I am about as close to chemistry as it is possible for an engineer to get uh, without ruining a perfectly good lab coat fetish. I'm also... As <laughs> I'm also as close as it is possible for an engineer to get to being a physicist without becoming a white sexist man. <laughs> um, yeah, so tonight I'm going to be taking you guys on a journey. It's a journey to a place where you lose all sense of perspective. It's a journey to a place that is so hot that you can fry an egg on the bonnet of a Fiat Punto. It's a journey to a place... Uh, that I can't remember the next thing. Um, and that was just on the plane on the way to Heathrow. Um, I'm taking your journey to uh, the Bonneville Salt Flats, which are 111 miles to the west of Salt Lake City, in the predominantly, in the predominantly Mormon state of Utah in the US. And, um, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, yeah, I was doing this. Uh, suddenly, I found myself sitting uh, in the back seat of a 4x4 Chevrolet pickup truck surrounded by five Scotsmen who were extremely sweaty and saying swear words the likes of which I had never even dreamed were possible. <laughs> um, there was methanol fumes coming in through the windows. My eyes were aching. I couldn't see anything. I was coughing up methanol fumes. Um, and I was willing the tiny speck in the distance to get further away because it was here in Bonneville, uh, in the Salt Flats, where I was going to be uh, land speed racing, trying to break the land speed record. Um, I was going to be doing this with uh, five Scotsmen, three Frenchies, and one ex-materials engineer who was British, um, and he, presumably, I've found, uh, has a death wish. Um, <laughs> and uh, this, this chap with a death wish is called Rick Pearson. Uh, he's my good friend and uh, somehow still alive friend. Um, now, Rick studied materials engineering at university and did as any self-respecting materials engineer would do and left immediately to become a city banker. <laughs> Uh, here he made loads of money, unsurprisingly, and years later bought a supercar streamliner called uh, the Flower of Scotland. This is it. Um, and uh, he takes this car every year to go land speed racing at the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah, um, trying to break the land speed record for the particular uh, category of engine. Uh, the particular category, for those interested, I know there's some of you in here. <laughs> um, it's a thousand cc, so a one litre engine. Uh, it's a streamliner, so you're sitting in it, like lying down like this. No, I did that, not this. Um, <laughs> uh, and at the time that I was there, which was in 2011, that record uh, was, uh, stood at 313 miles an hour. Um, so that was our task. Uh, Rick was called up by his university. Uh, it's not Cambridge or Imperial, you won't guess which one it is. Um, and they were like, hey Rick, we heard that you're really rich now. Uh, do you want to give us some money? And he was like, no. Nope. Uh, what I will do is um, take one of your students with me to come land speed racing. Um, and he later told me that four of us were interested. Uh, he didn't think that the other three guys three guys would be able to handle being in that pickup truck with the sweaty Scotsman, so that left me. Um, and so it was that I found myself uh, sitting in that pickup truck, uh, driving the 1,200 kilometre journey from Salt Lake City, no, sorry, from LA to Salt Lake City. Um, and those of you interested in units, again, I know that there's some of you sitting there. Uh, you'll be pleased to hear that 1,200 kilometres is exactly 1.2 times 10 to the power of 14 beard seconds. <laughs> A beard second <laughs> is the distance that the average beard grows in a second. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so I'm in this car doing this massively long journey. Um, the guy driving it is a French lorry driver called Lupo. And Lupo doesn't speak a word of English. 
He also doesn't speak a word of any other language either, <laughs> apart from probably French, but I didn't know. Um, I also actually don't speak French or really any other languages. Um, and so the main thing that I took away from this journey was the fact that um, it's, there's no real time limit to how long awkward situations can be. <laughs> um, <laughs> And those of you who have ever had tantric sex on a first date will also agree. <laughs> My friend tells me, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, we, uh, we eventually made it all this long way and we approached the Salt Lake. Um, and on the road uh, approaching the Salt, it goes from being just a normal tarmac road down to a dirt track, down to just a wide expanse of nothingness. Years later, this would turn out to be a perfect analogy for my 20s. <laughs> um, anyway, I don't have actually much time to talk about this. So we were there for seven days and basically nothing much happened during the first two days. And I've brought my travel diary with me from the time. Uh, and I'll give you a brief extract from that in the first day. I report. We had a few engine problems today, which took all day to fix. A plug in the wrong socket and the wrong fuel in the tank. I bet women could have told them that in five minutes. <laughs> Not much else to report from today, other than that Team Scotland have already got themselves a reputation for having the two best looking girls on the salt. <laughs> Result? Um, the thing is, though, I'm pretty sure that those two girls were both me, um, and I just <laughs> put my hair up at some point during that afternoon. Um, because the, the thing about the salt is that um, these men, they can't really tell the difference between women because they've never actually seen more than one, so they just all look the same to them. Um, the main racing happened, uh, started on the third day when we made our first attempt at the record. I report. Rick was very nervous. <laughs> My role of umbrella holder was absolutely crucial. <laughs> so during these uh, these land speed races, uh, I was in the push up truck, uh, push up pickup truck. Um, <laughs> that a sex thing? I don't know. Um, I was riding in the pickup truck, uh, which is called the push truck, and. The reason that you have a push truck is that uh, first gear in this car only starts at 60 miles an hour. So you have a truck that literally pushes the car from 0 to 60, w at which point first gear can start and, and carries on. Um, and that was a situation that I was describing earlier with the sweaty Scotsman in that car. Um, so we did the first pass on day three, and um, we had an electrical failure in the car. Now, the reason that this is bad news is that the Flower of Scotland doesn't actually have any brakes. Um, all it has is a pair of parachutes that come out the back. And those parachutes are operated by electricity. Um, so Rick realised that the parachutes weren't going to go out and so just sort of cruised to the side of the race and carried on until the car came to a standstill. If you can imagine the widest, most unimpressive donut that a driver has ever achieved. <laughs> as he went miles and miles down the salt in order to try and impress the ladies. I say ladies, there was one lady. And I couldn't even see it because it was so far away. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was the first pass. We fixed the electrical problems. I say we, it wasn't me, it was the engineers. The other hey! engineers. What? Um, I did some work. Um, we, they fixed the electronics and we had a second pass on that day. Um, during that second pass, it went pretty well, but then during the shift from third to fourth gear, the engine went bang. Um, so we took it back to the pits and we had a look to see what was going on. I report. <laughs> the boys took the engine apart and found some shards of gear cogs. I got to use my material science to try to work out what had happened. <laughs> it was all very exciting and relevant. <laughs>
fuck. <laughs> Such a fucking dork. Um, okay, speaking of being a fucking dork, um, I've actually brought two of those gear cogs with me today. Um, these gear cogs usually spend most of their time in my purse and uh, periodically come out during first dates. <laughs> I'm really trying to impress someone. Um, <laughs> uh, and the interesting thing about these gear cogs uh, is the fact that they exhibit te uh, textbook ductile and brittle fracture. What do we mean by that? This is the one explaining bit of the thing. Um, sorry about the stupid photo. I mean, like, uh, low resolution photo. I did this in my kitchen this afternoon and I have a shit phone, so that's why, <laughs> that's, why that's happened. Um, anyway, uh, this is textbook brittle and ductile fracture. You have all probably experienced uh, ductile fracture, which is this one. Um, if you've ever tried to share a curly whirly, <laughs> you know? <laughs> 90s children will know that that is a rookie error. <laughs> Um, in brittle fracture, which is this one, you have a much cleaner fracture surface. This is like if you try and to share uh, some dark chocolate with your mates, all of you pretending that you prefer dark chocolate, <laughs> and really you all just want a whisper. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Um, day four, because of all this cog action, we had to change the gearbox. Uh, I say we. Um, <laughs> We gave it another run, but the chain failed this time. And morale was at an all-time low, I report. Everyone's pretty bummed out, I think. <laughs> Luckily, a very good-looking biker from the pit next door has just come round to help. Every cloud. <laughs> um, so after that good-looking biker gave us a helping hand, uh, to cut long story short, days five and six, much of the same. Engines breaking, things falling apart, other people fixing them. Um, <clears throat> which took us to day seven, which was our final day on the salt. Because of all these engine problems, we actually swapped out the entire broken engine with an entire new one. Um, and... This worked remarkably well. On the first pass on day seven, we got up to 259 miles an hour. On the second time, we got up to 270 miles an hour. Ooh. Unit fans amongst you? <laughs> well, enjoy hearing that 270 miles an hour is exactly 10.9 Farage furlongs per second. <laughs> A Farage furlong per second is a measure of speed, and it's the speed at which Nigel Farage ran towards Donald Trump's arse <laughs> in order to lick it in November. <laughs> so we got up to 270 miles an hour, um, and we decided to just go for a Hail Mary run at the end of the last day. Um, unfortunately, this broke the engine, and so that was game over for 2011. Um, we were pretty gutted not to have achieved the record, um, but we all got our blackberries out and promised to BBM each other when we got home just to stay in touch. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I mean, it was pretty disappointing not to have got the record, but to be honest, we were just really happy to still be alive, so that was fine. And much pr frivolity occurred that evening, I report. <laughs> Sadly, it's nothing to do with that fit biker. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, no. Had a terrible night's sleep, because one, was wasted. And two, Lupo was fucking snoring like a warthog. Um, the funniest thing about that story is the fact that I have actually slept next to a warthog after I'd showed him my gear cogs. Uh, but, my friends, that is a story for another day. I've been Anna Fajajski, you've been wonderful, thank you so much.